Hi, this is Craig Stocks here for Utah Desert Remote Observatories. You can find us online at www.utahdesertremote.com. And today I want to talk about this four panel mosaic. This shows the outline of the four panels. And I want to talk about the easy way to put those panels together in Photoshop. <music> So real quick before we jump into this, let me tell you about a workshop opportunity that we have coming up in September. Uh, this is myself and Dr. Christian Sasse, the uh, principal astronomer for itelescope.net. And we are running a workshop here in St. George, September 10th through the 15th. This will be a hands-on masterclass but for people really with uh, any skill level, uh, any level of experience. What makes it unique is we're going to be covering both Milky Way and deep sky astrophotography. We have a series of night sky photo shoots arranged for Milky Way and at the same time we're going to be shooting remotely using either the Utah Desert Remote Observatories telescopes or the iTelescope network of telescopes all over the world both northern and southern hemisphere. So it's a great opportunity for both Milky Way and deep sky photography, uh, check it out on our website at utahdesertremote.com. So we're going to put the panels together in Photoshop, but as with most of my Astro projects, I start in PixInsight. So let's jump over to PixInsight. And this is the WBPP setup that I used. And part of what makes this a little bit challenging is there's four panels and each of the four panels includes both a, a, a clear filter and an Optolong um, L Enhance filter to pick up the um, primarily the, the hydrogen gas, the HA signal. So, you know, that creates two problems. Not only do we have to align four panels, we have to align uh, two sets of four panels and they all have to line up. So it, it gets a little bit tricky or at least can be. Um, but I found a way in Photoshop that works at least some of the time uh, that's just too simple. Uh, it's like magic. Anyway, uh, let's work our way toward that. First, this is the setup, and you can see this is the, uh, the L Enhance filter, and here's pane 1, pane 2, pane 3, pane 4, and then we have the uh, luminosity or this is a, just a clear filter and the only reason that's there is to achieve some semblance of uh, par focus so that I don't have too much of a focus difference between the L enhance and no filter. So same way we've got pane one, two, three, and four of the luminosity and in order to do a mosaic what I need to do is come over to the calibration tab and along with everything else, setting the, the CFA settings and so forth, uh, over here in the grouping keywords, I created a grouping keyword for pane. And then once you create that, you can click on it. And if you click on the gear icon, if you see the check mark here, as I, each time I click on it, it'll cycle between none, just pre, pre and post, and just post. And I really want it to apply the keyword just in post calibration and if we look at the the output here you can see that it's doing uh, pane one and pane two if we look at post calibration you'll see that it's actually going to output four images for each set uh, pane one two three and four of the l enhance pane one two three and four of the luminosity and then the other thing that we need to do is under the registration reference image we want to choose auto by pane. And what that'll do is it will choose a, refer a reference image for each pane so that pane one of the L enhance and pane one of the luminosity line up. And that's fairly important. Once I run that, and I've already run it, it will give me a whole bunch of output files. And unfortunately that's kind of the tedious part. Uh, what you need to do then is go to your swap files and go to the master and you'll see <clears throat> starting here we've got 
luminosity pane one, two, three, and four, enhance panes one, two, three, and four. And let's just open a couple of these to just to look at. And of course, these are linear at this point, so they're just going to appear black. And what I did to get ready for Photoshop was I want to create a stretched TIFF image so that Photoshop has something it can recognize and work with. So if we look at this, this is the uh, just the luminosity frame. Uh, so this is pane four, and this is actually uh, upside down from the image that we looked at, so don't let that confuse you. Uh, this is row of Yuki right here, I believe. Um, the first thing I would do is just run a simple dynamic background extraction with sample points uh, set around the perimeter, and I have that saved, so all I have to do is open it up and execute it, and that does a quick dynamic background extraction. And we'll cancel that, update our screen stretch. The next thing I would do, and I'm not going to take time to do it, is run the uh, spectrophotometric color calibration. Since this is the, the luminosity or the RGB image, I want the correct colors in the stars. So I would run that. Then I would run Blur Exterminator to tighten up the stars, tight, sharpen up the uh, nebula, and so forth. And then the last thing would be to run Noise Exterminator and then I would save this and now, oh, I would also stretch it. And normally you see me use the screen transfer function and I will fine tune these sliders. Because this is going into a mosaic, uh, I don't trust my ability to adjust each one correctly. So I'm just going to take the default <clears throat> screen transfer function stretch and apply that. So you just apply that again by dragging the triangle down to the bar in the histogram transformation function, apply that, and then turn off the screen stretch. And now we have a, a nonlinear stretched image that we can save as a 16-bit TIFF. Once those are all saved, now we pop over to Photoshop. And what we want to do in Photoshop, this shows the, the arrangement that I wound up with of the four panes. And remember, there's four times two, so there's actually eight. And I would have gone through the sequence I just showed you eight times, that's the tedious part, uh, and saved eight TIFF files. So now we can load those, go to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. And you've probably seen me use this before if you watched any of my videos. So we just browse to find the files that we want. And I know this is going to be in my swap files. Uh, and I saved these as 16-bit TIFFs, and these are they right here. So there's pane 1, 2, 3, and 4 of luminosity, panes 1, 2, 3, and 4 of the L enhance, and just click open to open that list, and then open to load those eight files uh, as layers in one document. And yeah, it gets to be a big document, um, and you've heard me talk before about uh, my rather cavalier approach to file sizes. So here's our eight files all loaded as layer stacks and what we want to do is align these and blend them. This doesn't always work but when it does it's like magic. The top layer is already selected by default. I'll just shift click on the bottom layer. Now all eight layers are selected. I'll go to edit, auto align layers and I'll just use auto and click OK and Photoshop will go through and auto align all of these and the beautiful part about this is not only does it figure out where panes 1, 2, and 3, 4 overlap and, and align, <clears throat> it also aligns those with the L enhance. So there are my four layers spread out. Here are the four luminosities and let's just select those four and drop them into a, a layer group with control G. I can turn those off. There are my four L enhance. Again, I'll just throw those into a layer group for just for good housekeeping. Now we need to blend these together. And so I'll grab first the L enhance and go back to edit. And this time we're going to choose auto blend layers. And the settings here will are the for panorama, 
and we want seamless tones and colors. Click OK. And now Photoshop is going to go through and <clears throat> figure out the overlap and try to try to adjust the tone and color so that they blend together nicely. Uh, it, we may have to do a little bit of touch up afterwards, but it won't be very much. And I so say this doesn't always work, but when it does, it's just like magic. Look at that. Just you know, just look at that. Uh, sometimes you'll see a little bit of a uh, an artifact along the mask edge, but once you merge these together, and since those are all selected, I can just do a Control E to merge those, and voila. There's a little bit of a blending artifact there where one frame was a little bit darker, and we'll clean that up later. Now we just go to the clear filter, and again we choose edit, auto blend layers, click OK, and again it will go through and these are already aligned so it just has to figure out the blending and the uh, the tone mapping to, to match them so that they look you know similar when they're when they go together and it's I say this doesn't always work uh, but I've had it work more times than it doesn't and so again there's the uh, now we have the the clear filter so the last thing I would do here is typically I would just drop a solid black background behind it and just choose a solid color fill layer and we'll put it clear down at the bottom so that we have a nice black outline around it. And then I want to save each one of these views. So this is the, the clear or the luminosity. So I would go to File, Save a Copy, and I would save this as a TIFF file. And when you, when you choose that, one of the options is to discard layers and save a copy and and that's what you want to do here so you we're saving this as a just as a flattened 16-bit tiff file that's going to look just like this and then i'll do the same thing with the l enhance and that gives me two great big uh, images that are the full panorama now i go back to PixInsight, and we'll just close some things here that are going to be in our way. Yes, I want to close this. So now we have our three big panels that we saved. And I think I think I think those are they. We'll find out here in just a second. I may have accidentally overwritten them with something else. There we go. So there's So here is the RGB. Here is the L enhance. And so the last thing we need to do, or that I typically do, is remove the stars. So now I would run star exterminator, and I would run star exterminator on the, uh, the luminosity or the, uh, the RGB version, and save those stars, and then I would just remove the stars from the L enhance because I only want stars from the, the RGB version. And that gives me then three files. It gives me the, a starless version of this, the stars, <clears throat> and then the L enhanced version of this. So the last step then is to go back into Photoshop, and I'm just going to close this. And what I'll do is, again, file scripts, load files into stack, and I just need to navigate to where I saved those final files and those I did save in a different folder. So here's the stars, the RGB, and the L enhance. Click OK and OK. And this will load the four layers. There's the L enhance, there's the stars, and there's the RGB layer. And of course, you put the stars in screen blending mode. So if you're just doing RGB, you know, you're kind of done right there. And you can turn the stars on or off. It, you get some unusual effects around uh, globular clusters sometimes and bright stars, but, but that's generally okay. 
And then if you want to do any specific edits to this, you know, we might you know, create a levels adjustment and add a little bit more punch to the uh, nebula portion. Uh, we might boost the saturation a little bit, something like that. If we want to add the L enhance data, the way I did it, uh, first let me put this into a layer group and I'll give it a quick label and let's pull it up above and I'll leave it down here. And let's put the put this one in a layer group as well. So this is the RGB. So turn off RGB, there's the L enhance. And again, we might throw some uh, levels adjustments on here to, to spiff it up a little bit. Uh, I would typically remove any of these stars that are, are if, there, if there's any star like here, here, some of these stars are going to just create problems. So I would typically just take those out. And this is, since this layer is really just about picking up the hydrogen, uh, you can be fairly, fairly crude with this. And I would probably want to do a better job than this, and I do spend much more time on this to clean it up. But this kind of gives you the idea. Throw some saturation in here. So this is our L enhanced data, and we want to just spiff it up with the RGB data. Generally, the RGB data is lighter, where there's interesting detail. So we can just put it in lighten, blending mode. That's without, that's with. So what we're doing is using the, the colorful RGB data to brighten any of the areas in the L enhance that were too dark or darker. Turn the stars back on and you're fairly close to a finished image. So that's what I wanted to show you. The magic is using that uh, auto align layers and auto blend layers <clears throat> and what's amazing is that it will automatically align a whole set of different filters. Uh, I did the same thing once with the uh, Orion region with a 12 panel mosaic and it aligned all 12 just boom. Uh, saved me all kinds of time. I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions be sure to drop them in the comments below. Uh, if you find this useful, be sure to uh, like and subscribe to the channel. And if you click for notifications, you'll be notified anytime I uh, publish a new tutorial. So I hope that helped. I hope you have a great day today and an even better night tonight under a clear, dark sky. Thanks. Mm -hmm.